the second episode firewood processor build in this episode I'm gonna build the splitter basically the hard parts of the splitter got the 8 by I think it's an 8 by 8 H beam half inch top and bottom flange the center flange is 3 8 I'm uh, just checking my height I basically wanted about waist high easier to pull the wood off made my pusher plate sled plate carriage I'm not sure what you call it 11 by 11 gives me an inch and a half overhang on both sides of the beam I'm trying to figure out this plaza cutter. It's been a long time since I used a plaza cutter. But I will say this hypertherm is an amazing plaza cutter. Now the piece of cutting off this plate, this narrower piece will be one of the pieces that goes in around the bottom part of the beam. Cut the other one here. I think these are about four inches wide. I don't remember exactly. Um, tack weld and everything together that way I can drill through both pieces at one time. I'm just setting it up on my mill. I think I was three quarters the center in and then an inch and a quarter from each end which gave me about I think a 2.1 inches between each bolt hole I uh, drilled um, five holes on each side Just deburn the hole with a counter sink. Right, each hole is five eighths of an inch. I'm using five eighths shouldered fine thread bolts to hold the plate together.
So these pieces are the pieces that I'll be sandwiched in between and they will ride in against the beam. So I need these to be an inch and a half. I cut them about an inch and three quarter and then I cleaned them up on the mill to make them parallel and the right width that I needed. I need to tack these on so I can drill the holes through those. Maybe I should have done through all three at one time. I'm not sure if it was really worth it. This wasn't that big of a deal to set this up, especially since I was at the 2.1 inches between each hole. Once I had the first hole set up, it was pretty it was pretty easy. Just reset my DRO and move to each hole. I you could probably just as easily do this on a drill press as you as I am on a mill actually drill press might even be easier this mill is way underpowered it's really hard to spin a drill bit real slow without bogging the machine down real far Grade 8 flanged bolts and nuts, fine thread. So my top flange being half inch and this sheet metal being half inch, I figured I was going to run into some issues. So here I'm just figuring out uh, how much more thickness I'll have to add to be able to still move the sled and not have a whole lot of play in it. Uh, I think I ended up, yeah, I, can't, I ended up coming up with a sixteenth of an inch that I needed to add in the form of a shim for it to slide back and forth. Uh, this is also when I discovered the beam had a crown to it in the middle. I guess by the way it was formed, I'm not really sure. Uh, the wedge is from Rugged Made. It's 16 inches overall and then has 10 inch knife edge on it, uh, one inch thick. So I'm basically just marking it out to cut it out to go inside the beam.
and I lost audio at this part of the video. Something happened with the camera where it wasn't picking up audio for a little bit. Not that the noise really helps any, but it's kind of weird. did make a big mistake here I put the wedge in lined everything up squared it all up never cleaned where I cut that out uh, I didn't even realize it till I was welding for a little while and discovered that I didn't clean it so I had to clean after the fact as best I could uh, basically weld it from both sides and top and bottom so I'm pretty confident that the wedge is not going to go anywhere. Uh, this cylinder is from Rugged Made. It's a four and a half inch with a three inch rod. 24 inch stroke. I cut all my wood at 22 inches. Just That's what works out best for me and my boiler. Uh, the piece on the end of this the cylinder, I made that off camera. It was a piece that was on some sort of tooling that was rolled. Uh, I had to bore it out on the lathe. Uh, there was a piece cut out of the one part of it, uh, so I had to weld a piece in and reshape that. It was just 
basically thick enough. It's about the only thing I could find that would work. Uh, here I'm just marking it out. I used a bucket as a guideline. I think the bucket was 12 inches round. Uh, the biggest I plan to cut and split is 16. So I just wanted to get an idea of a V trough that the wood will fall into that wouldn't be too small or too big for whatever I was going to cut. I might run into issues with smaller pieces of wood, but we'll see. It'll be to the trial and error. Now the pusher plate there is three quarters of an inch. Now that was a new piece of steel I ordered. Uh, this piece that I'm measuring and marking out, I don't know what that was from. It was just a piece of scrap. Kind of worked out well for reinforcing the pusher plate. Uh, I'm cutting this back off because I, I tacked it on off camera and didn't even realize I never centered it before I tacked it. So I ended up having to cut that back off. I wanted to cut pieces for either side of this center piece, so I had to finish weld that in so I would be able to get it welded before I closed that side, each side up. Before I should have welded anything on this bottom, I should have tightened those bolts up on the pusher plate so that it would have pulled it tight down to the beam. It's going to end up coming back to bite me. Uh, this Here I'm just cutting those little side pieces uh, on either side of that center. There they are tacked in.
This is what was left of that first piece I started cutting up. So I just made two identical pieces come out in an angle from the center upwards. Now the bottom wasn't sitting quite flat, so I'm up taking this back off and trying again. And uh, starting to notice the wobble. <laughs> it's way worse than it was just with that crown and the beam. Uh, it basically heating that up like I pulled those both outsides up. had some deforming of that piece that I'm grinding right there after the weld so I just had to clean that up a little bit for it to slide back on the cylinder so the end of the cylinder is I think it was 2.37 inches uh, when I bored that piece out I bored it to 2.4 inches because I wanted as tight a fit as possible so there was no real play there or twisting or anything like that. And the, even the holes where the pin goes through, they deformed a good bit, so I had to clean them out as well.
And I got the burr bit out. So I need safety glasses for definitely for that thing. There's pretty wicked hot chunks of metal out. This is about when I notice more of the deforming of the plate. Uh, uh, it, you can kind of see it in the video that the back of the plate is actually up. It was probably close to a quarter inch. Uh, I did I rechecked my height here, front and back, and I did notice my back was a little high. So uh, I took that piece off. I cut probably about a quarter inch off. And also, that helped square that up. And that was about as good as I was going to get. I didn't want to drop the back down any more than I already did. Uh, I wanted the cylinder basically parallel to the beam through the whole stroke. Which, that's about where I was there. I made a mistake here. I switched my gas bottle. And I'm just used to my uh, gas bottles, if they're argon, being brown. And that bottle was actually an argon, even though it was blue. So I ended up having to switch the bottle back. Luckily, I only did one weld. I could grind that out and switch to my mixed gas. There you can really see the... I mean, the beam had the crown, but the plate also had a crown on it. So I just kept grinding it down a little bit. I probably didn't take much more than maybe a 30 second off of it to get it so it was pretty much flush again. Still had the rock though because of the crown in the beam, but nothing I could really do about that. I mean, I guess I could try to grind the beam down to make it smooth, but I don't think it would be worth all the effort it would take to do that. Uh, here I'm just basically lining up to drill my shims. Uh, the shim was just a it was a piece of inch and a half, one sixteenth aluminum. I just lined it up, drilled all the holes in it. Uh, ended up having to go with an eighth inch, so two one sixteenths. I just did them top and bottom of the uh, sliding pieces. Uh, Tighten everything up. It took me a little while to figure out why it wouldn't move, but I could still couldn't get it to move. Uh, just looking it over, I had plenty of gap. And I ended up figuring it out. It was one of my slide pieces on the side when I tightened the bolts. was grabbing the beam. Uh, I think I milled that off off camera because... Point, I was just getting frustrated with the fact that it wasn't moving the way it should, even though my measurements were correct. Uh, I did. I took some out of the top, uh, top back and bottom front on this because of the little bit of twist, and that really helped a lot with getting the plate squared up good. So everything's sliding back and forth real good. A little more play than I wanted in it, but I don't think it's too bad. Uh, 
I'm just cutting off the excess of the beam. Uh, this beam altogether was close to 400 pounds. It was just shy of 400 pounds, at least according to the scrap yard when I weighed in and weighed out with it. Uh, I think I paid 190 some bucks for it, which actually my dad paid for it. He's looking forward to this machine just as much as I am. Just a lot easier work. I was actually really hoping when I got this beam that all said and done the beam will be long enough to make another splitter out of. This cross member to hold the back of the beam is way too thin, so I ended up cutting that out. And I still had another piece of frame rail from when I cut the length of the trailer down that I'm going to weld in place and then weld the back of the beam to that. I just centered the beam on the trailer. I thought about offsetting it one way or the other, depending on making room for different stuff, but at the end of the day, if I ever put this on the road, uh, I don't want it to trailer weird because there's too much weight to one side or the other, so I just left everything centered. Uh, that's the end of this video. Uh, the next episode will be the infeed table. I got some parts on order. It'll be 81x chain fed. I'd like to do rollers on both ends. I just gotta figure that part out. 
Uh, I got two old snow plows that I'm probably going to use as the bottom, like where the log lays for the infeed, and basically cut them in half. Uh, just because I have access to them, I figured that would work out. I uh, should have plenty of steel to at least build that part of it. Uh, it's just going to be a little more complicated because now I'm getting to the point where i got to figure out where the hydraulic motor is going to mount, stuff like that. Uh, I don't know my sprocket sizing or anything yet. And even the sprocket size might be something I have to figure out after the fact. Once I have it running to see if it's too slow or too fast. I uh, did the calculations on the motor I got a, a hold of, and I think it should be 400 RPMs, but I still need to verify that and then try to do some calculations to figure out what would be the best sprocket size to run the drive shafts for the, uh, for the 81X chain. So, uh, give me a like, subscribe keep an eye out for the next episode don't know how long it'll take to get the next one out but uh, I'll be working on it pretty soon so hopefully within a few weeks I can get it out and hopefully it turns out good thanks for watching